Oh, I missed what you fall. Okay. Fight, 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 fight. Oh. Blue head. No, 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 no. I don't know whose hand I'd hit. Yeah, if you... I get a bit that. Oh, it's it's dog, 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 just gonna have a look at it, Ollie. Yeah. I'm not doing the same. He's not got the ball. He's not got the ball. No, it's because it's in the area. Listen, listen, listen. It's in the area. It's a genuine attempt for half a percent. Come here, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you. Listen, listen, let's talk to Gary. Let me talk. Let me talk to Gary. Let me talk. It's not. It's a genuine attempt for the ball. Let's talk to Gary. It's a genuine attempt for the ball. It changed the year ago. It changed the year ago. It's a genuine attempt for the ball. It's a yellow card. Yeah, thank you. Spot on. Yeah. He's, uh, he's coming from the side. As on body's in between, he doesn't touch the ball. Well, VR looks at it already. VR looks at it anyway. Yeah. 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 Phil Jones, number four, yellow card, genuine attempt to play the ball, didn't win it. Eden, whistle. David, whistle, he's in. Perfect. Good work, Phil. Phil, stay out. Yeah. Phil, stay out. Jesse, stay out. I hope you agree. That is absolutely is brilliant stuff. That's television history right there. We, when we were shown it on our recent trip to the UK, we asked to see it about five times in a row <laughs> because there is so much going on. That's why we have Mark here today to stop it at key moments, to explain to us all the different facets of that entire passage of play. So we're going to run that tape again. Mark, it's up to you to just go through it for us and tell us the key moments and what's happening. Perfect. It's a perfect insight into listening to what referees actually speak on the pitch because very rare oh, you certainly don't get the chance to listen to what's actually being said and it's fascinating fascinating yeah. let's run the tape once more then and uh and mark you take it away yep I'll miss michael. so Mike, michael's speaking yeah. now with his assistant yeah. referees uh, because it's it's very no, very important no, 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 no. Um, teamwork because what will happen is as the ball's going towards the offside line he needs to inform the assistant referee who the ball has come off last because the assistant referee will always be looking across at the line he's not always looking at who's played the ball last so it's important that the referee will tell the assistant referee who's had the last touch <laughs> then we have a situation where the ball is played long and we've got a one-on-one -on -one duel and we have a potential dogzo. What dogzo means is a denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity just for everybody to understand what is dogzo. Because dogzo is a terminology. But very similar to what happened yesterday in the Bournemouth Everton game, a referee has to take a picture before any potential foul outside the penalty area because it be could, could become a red card offence. And it's important because referees and assistants, why they take pictures before it actually happens is it's they only get one chance to see it so it's important that they take them pictures and they remember them so if it's outside the penalty area or inside because if it goes inside it's a different decision mm -hmm. if it's a genuine attempt for the for the ball okay play on so and if the ball goes inside the penalty area there's a challenge by phil jones now the referee has a big decision in the fa cup final is it a penalty kick he awards a penalty kick and yellow cards Phil Jones for a genuine attempt to play the ball because in the old laws, in the old triple punishment law, this would have been a red card. And I don't think any pundit, any football fan, any player, any referee accepted that if there was a genuine attempt to reduce a team down to 10 players for that type of offence, we felt was harsh. So now, 12 months ago, they changed the law and it's much better that when there's a genuine attempt, a yellow card's issued. Now he's saying, let me talk to Gary. And is that because he's captain, Gary Cahill? Yes, because what referees are recommended to do is use captains. So he's, he's being surrounded by Manchester United players, he's being surrounded by Chelsea players. And what he wants to do is explain the process. He wants to explain why there's a yellow card. And he's ex going to explain to Gary, get your players away from me. I'll deal with you one to one. And please explain the decision to your teammates. Let's listen to the next bit. It's not. It's a genuine attempt for the ball. It's a genuine attempt for the ball. It changed the year ago. It's a genuine attempt for the ball. It's a yellow card. Yeah. Thank you. 
spot on yeah. TV show now. He's, uh, he's coming from the side. Just during this passage of play now, the video re assistant referee will be automatically reviewing the decision. And this is, people say to me, it stops the flow. It's not stopping the flow because we're actually using the time wisely just to check the decision. And what, what the, video referee, um, the video referee will be looking at is there's actually a potential handball by Victor Moses in the build-up, so that needs to be checked first. Is there a handball? Because if it is a handball, the goal will be chalked off because the ball has gone straight from the, from the hand, potential handball. He'll then look at offside. Then he'll check it's actually a foul. And these are the three steps that the video assistant referee will be looking at in the studios with all the camera angles just to make sure that Michael Oliver's decision in such a huge game is correct. And he has the time because the players are remonstrating no matter what. Play on. It happens anyway. It happens anyway. It happens anyway. Relax. Michael. Just to confirm, Neil. Check complete. Check complete. Checked. Fine. Penalty is correct. And it's important that the video referee, assistant referee, tells the referee. That everything's, ex that everything's correct. It's not a clear and obvious error. It's not a mistake from the referee because once the penalty's taken, you can't then change the decision. The only thing you can do on a red card for violent conduct, something that happened off the ball, you can go back to it 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes later. Once this penalty's been taken, you cannot go back and review. And so he has to get authorization from VAR to, get to, to, to go forward with his decision. Yeah, the referee will not start play until okay. he's had authorization from the video assistant referee that he can carry on. And that's why it's important, and you'll see a lot of referees stop and play even for goal kicks. Because if a lot of the goalkeepers know, for example, there may be a potential penalty, they'll try and retake the goal kick quickly, knowing that if they do that and it's allowed, then they can't review the penalty. So goalkeepers are also trying to be clever. Okay, let's now listen to the way he talks to the players. Listen to this. Phil Jones, number four, yellow card, genuine attempt to play the ball, didn't win it. Eden, whistle. <laughs> David, whistle, he's in. Good work, Phil. Phil, stay out. Yeah. Ball, stay out. Jesse, stay out. I have to, I have to say this is absolutely textbook um, communication, the way the referee and the assistant referee are working together, because we're a team. You know, football, football players are, are playing in a team. Referees, assistants, the fourth official. We have to work together as a team, and this is fascinating, fascinating. Insight. How much does a referee's personality change how that's executed? Because it seems like he talks to himself a lot, and when we first heard it, we had no idea who was saying what and what was going on. Yeah, this, but the referees will use, when they brought communication in, everybody was like, oh, what, how do we use it? When do we use it? But the more you use it, you want to use it because you want to make sure that who's played the ball last, who's, who's challenged for the ball, who's on the back post at corner kicks, because, for example, not knowing who's on the back post. If there's a handball on the goal line, automatically we'll know who it is. So a lot of these things are done over the communication. When we didn't have it, it was so difficult for a referee to be able to communicate with his assistant. Mark, as Rebecca said, when we first saw it, we absolutely loved it. Do you think that things like that should be shown to, to, to out there more often to help the players, the fans and managers understand how difficult the job is? I wouldn't say, yeah, for, for, for sure, showing this footage to, to everyone to show how difficult it is, what the communication's like, but I would love to see it where in such important moments, big decisions, that the referee can open his microphone up and explain to the world why he's made that decision. Even if it's right or wrong, at least people can have a wonderful insight mm. to why he's given it because they get one chance to see it. I think educationally too it'll help. I mean, even with players, Ashley Young, you know, so the only reason it was really delayed is some people don't yet understand the process. If, if everyone understands the process, I think it goes quicker because everyone accepts it. Exactly. And what, what's interesting is the way Michael deals with the players, the way he manages, he, he, he has the respect from the players. And he's warning the players even on the penalty area. And why? Because you don't want encroachment. You do not want a respot for a penalty. So he's even warning the players cleverly to make sure that they stay outside the penalty area. And this is top, top refereeing. Brilliant. As ever, great insight. And thank you, Mark, mm. so much as well for taking the time to go through the